Of course, you're watching Mark Hodges TV, the voice of college football, where we bring on the best bloggers, broadcasters, and writers in the industry. We appreciate Steve Dace from Michigan Podcast uh, standing by here. Steve, how are you doing tonight? I'm well, Mark. How are you, man? I'm doing just fine. I expected you to be a little more chipper. That's that's worn off since Saturday night, I guess. Yeah, we're now heading into what's become a tradition unlike any other <laughs> perennial inventing a way to lose to Michigan State. So uh, anxious to just get this one out of the way and take our beating and get it over with. Well, my my read on you, and I don't think I've had to be a genius to do this because you've made it very plain to everyone when you've joined us, is that um, you've um, you've held firm to the evaluation that it's Jim Harbaugh and this program's growing and developing and building even through the four regular season losses last year. Then that South Carolina effort really got to you. And then you wanted to see proof during the off season. Of course, you're not going to get it, but you wanted to, you were basically declaring, we need to see it on the field now. Mm -hmm. The Notre Dame game was a disappointment, not a blowout, but they were outplayed on the road. And uh, I, I know you didn't, um, not just the loss, but you were not feeling good about maybe where the program was at that point, but everything since then, the trajectory has just risen and risen and risen. That was not a vintage Wisconsin team that you beat on Saturday night, but it's still Wisconsin. And it was a dominant performance. It was. And, um, you know, it's the worst loss in a regular season game Wisconsin's had since 2008. Uh, it's the first time in 33 big 10 road games. They lost by more than a touchdown. And the only two teams that have beaten them since 2011 by more than 10 points won the national championship that year, Alabama and Ohio State. So, I mean, it's the most rushing yards against a ranked opponent for Michigan since 2000. So, I mean, it, it, it was a statement win, no question about it. And Saturday night was a lot of fun. But, you know, I have said on Michigan podcast several times in the last, as you referenced, going back to the South Carolina game, for me, uh, the M also stands for, for Missouri, as in you got to show me, okay? And I'm, I don't drink any Kool-Aid anymore. I, I don't project anything. Uh, I did predict us to get to 10-2 and two, uh, at the beginning of the year in my preview. I didn't think a team would get out of the East with two losses. I'm still not sure a team will get out of the East with less than two losses. Uh, but it, now that we're in season and analyzing it game to game, and, you know, you like my preseason preview, one of the two losses I thought we were going to have was this game, okay? So until I see us go on the road uh, and and win a game against a ranked team, I, I'm just – and I don't know why anybody else would, really. I mean, it's just a – it's a totally different program when they put on the white jerseys. Uh, we have seen it uh, for several years now. We've seen it throughout the Harbaugh era. You know, they will beat Maryland 59-3 to one week at home in 2016 when they're ranked number two in the country. And they'll go on the road to Iowa, drop a touchdown, drop a first down pass, lose 13 to 12. I mean, it's, it's a different team on the road. It reminds me a little bit of the John Navarre era at Michigan, where he was cash money at home and would suck often on the road. And I used to, on my radio show at the time, I used to refer to it as John Bazaar. <laughs> Some bizarre throws and reads with the white jersey. I mean, it's like a totally different player. And it was just like bizarro world player. And, of course, when your quarterback does that, the rest of your team uh, is going to do that as well. So, you know, when I look at the game in terms of personnel, I don't really believe there's an advantage for Michigan State in terms of personnel. I think Michigan State's run defense is really good. But I, I think on average, the rush defenses they've played are something like 53rd in the nation. Uh, I think our offensive line is, uh, is a dramatic improvement. Ed Warner's done a great job there. I think Shea Patterson's a better quarterback than Brian Lewerke. Uh, I, I, when they're healthy, I think Sparty has a better receiver core, but they're not healthy right now. Uh, and so I think our receiver core is better. They don't have any tight ends. We have like four of them. Um, our defense, if their defense is good. Our defense is kind of like theirs, but with better athletes. I mean, it, this should not be a this should not be a game Michigan loses. But you know what? Mark shouldn't have dropped the damn punt snap in 2015. You know, we went in there in 2016 when they sucked. And we had 19 NFL players on the roster and one by nine points, you know. So last year we're, we're in a monsoon for reasons only a law knows. And we're chucking and ducking 70 times with John O'Corn at quarterback in a freaking monsoon. 
throwing five picks and losing 14 to 10. I, it's just, it's, it's, it's something every year. And I think what happens in our league is, and it's not just with Jim, I've seen Urban Meyer do it where he just got suckered into not giving the ball to Ezekiel Elliott in a driving rainstorm. Mark D'Antonio did this to James Franklin last week. He imposes his will on the other coaches in our league. I think he intimidates them on game day. I think he he so convinces the coaches in our league they have to do something different, new, and and that's kind of this scam where it, it's it's just it, there's all this going on, but really you just need to play your game, and that's what he's going to do. And until we see Michigan with the white uniforms go into a hostile environment against a team that's got a number in front of their name. I don't know. I mean, I was sitting there in the stands at Northwestern. That was a veritable home game for Michigan. You know, I made the treacherous trek through Chicago traffic with the sun to that game. And it was 17 to nothing before the game even got started. They just never – they decided the game started like an hour and a half later than, uh, you know, the scheduled kick. So I, I don't know what to say uh, about the game on Saturday other than I'm picking Michigan State to win until Michigan goes in there and proves they can beat a team with a number in front of their name on the road. Oh boy. It's those damn white pants. You shouldn't have switched from the gold to the white or the maze to yeah, be more know. accurate. I don't know. I, you know, we haven't beaten a ranked team on the road, Mark, since we beat number two Notre Dame in September of 2006. So we wore a lot of those road games with, with maze pants the last 12 years and didn't win any of those either. So I, I think it's a culture thing. I think it's a, and, and you know, a lot of teams don't beat ranked teams on the road. I think Michigan state and Penn state's record combined against teams on the road that are ranked in the last five years when they're not playing each other uh, is like three and 11. Okay. Not a lot of teams not called Alabama uh, or until last weekend, Georgia uh, go on the road and beat a lot of ranked teams. It's hard to do, but you know what else is hard to do? Not doing it once in 12 years, Mark, not doing it once in 12 years is pretty hard. So until we do it once, I'm not picking us to do it. So I would not be shocked if you've done the research on this, but I'm guessing there are at least a handful of lowly programs that have knocked off a road uh, opponent that was ranked during that time frame. I've not done the research because I, I gave up cutting myself for Lent. <laughs> we got Steve Dace on the line from Michigan podcast. Vegas believes in you. Solid seven point favorite. Okay. Okay. All right, it's Michigan. I, I think sometimes, State. you know, Mark D'Antonio is 17, 5, and 1 against the spread as an underdog at Michigan State. Since 2009, he's got 10 wins over top 10 teams. Okay. So, uh, again, I, I we have, they're really beat up. And they'll get some of those guys back. I mean, one thing we know about Michigan State is if anybody can walk, if there's anybody who has full motor function on football scholarship, they will be in uniform on the field. Magic Johnson will be in uniform. Lorenzo White, Percy Snow. Kirk everybody. Gibson. Let's throw him everybody, in. That's right. Everybody's freaking playing Saturday. We know that. All right. It's the game of the century every year. So this is really, I don't think, we know what Michigan State's going to be. And I said the same thing about the Wisconsin game last week. Wisconsin has an identity as a program. We know who they're going to be. And you, and you even saw when we got up by a couple of scores, they didn't go out of their brand of football. And, the, and, and so last week's game was really about we know Michigan is a very talented team, but we don't know is if it's a good team yet. And I think last year, last week we learned it can be a good team. Uh, and, you know, when they have the amount of talent they do and they didn't have any turnovers and they committed one penalty, I, I don't know, you know, if, if we're going to do that with the kind of talent we have, maybe other than that team in Tuscaloosa, I don't know anybody else in the country that's going to beat us if we're going to play clean like that. But, Mark, I mean, I know you're a college football savant. When was the last time you saw Michigan wearing a white uniform against a team that wasn't, you know, pronounced dead at the scene that played clean uh, in that setting? When was the last time you saw it, Mark? Well, we can erase the years 2008 to, sure. as, aside from 2011, that Sugar Bowl season. Right. So the Sugar Bowl team, they didn't beat anyone on the road. Apparently no. not. In fact, they were 6-0. They were and oh. Remember who their first loss was to? Come on, you know. 2011. That was... At Michigan State and East Lansing. They started 6 oh, okay. okay. and their first loss was to Sparty and East Lansing. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're talking Michigan football, the big game at Michigan State, East Lansing, seven-point favorite. And I think you brushed through the pluses and minuses and mostly pluses in the Michigan side with 
Michigan State, not running the ball like you would think a typical Michigan State team would. Brian Lewerke is their leading rusher. Good running the ball for the last few years. No. Brian Lewerke is their leading rusher. And until last week, LJ Scott, who hasn't played since week two, was their leading rusher. Their offensive line, you know, I, I interviewed uh, one of their guys, uh, Rico Beard from Spartan Beat on Michigan Podcast this week. And it sounds like our offensive line last year, you know, I, I think I told you last year we played 13 different offensive line combinations. Is that bad? That's bad. Yeah, for those scoring in bed, that's very bad. Uh, you don't want to have to play more than three or four different offensive line combinations because that means you have a ton of injuries and or a lack of execution. And cohesiveness is the biggest thing going for an offensive line. It's what Ed Warner has been saying since he was at Ohio State. It's not always the five most talented guys. It's the five guys that play the best together. And right now we're, you know, Michigan State, I think Rico Beard told me they're on their sixth or seventh offensive line combination because of injuries and the like. So uh, I don't I don't believe there is a personnel advantage. I think Felton Davis, because we'll play a lot of man-to-man, -man, he'll get a couple of big plays, you know. But the way we play pass defense usually is, unless it's, you know, Trace McSorley last year, pretty much under Don Brown, the way it works is you'll get a couple of big plays because we play man-to-man -man defense, and then you'll go three and out most of the rest of the game. That's that's kind of how it works against us. So Felton Davis will get a couple of his uh, DeAndre Hopkins plays, and then they probably won't get anything else other than that. What, but what I need to see Michigan do, you know, um, we almost lost a game to Northwestern in which Northwestern had 205 total yards. We averaged two and a half yards per play more than they did, and they had the ball at the end of the game and conceivably could have won. Why? Because when we put on the white uniform, um, Mr. Hyde becomes Dr. Jekyll. That's what happens. They get passive. They get soft. They don't play uh, mentally sound football. And they shoot themselves in the foot consistently. And so, um, you know, un until they get to the point that they're just not going to do that as a program anymore, I don't know why we would expect anything else when that's what we've seen for 12 years. You were able to do what you did uh, last Saturday night without Rashawn Gary. I believe that he's supposed to be on the field Saturday. Do we know for sure? Uh, we don't. And, you know, I think that's something people keep forgetting is, you know, you look at the defensive performance you saw last week from Michigan and a guy who could very well be a top 10 pick in next May's NFL draft didn't play a snap. Uh, and and we are really deep at that spot. Really. Deep. And so I, I, obviously, if you gave me a choice, I'd rather have Rashawn Gary out there. But they've recruited so well on the outside that I don't think it's nearly as big of a, a, a loss as, say, Nick Bosa is for Ohio State because of also the way we play defense. I mean, we scheme up pressure a lot, too. Uh, so um, I don't think whether he plays or not will have a factor in the outcome of the game. I really don't. And I think I think this whole game is played right up here with the guys in the wing downlands. And, and I just think it comes down to, do they do they feel like, you know, crap, man, let's not beat ourselves this time and see what happens. I, I really think it, I really think it comes down to that. So, yeah, it's been quite a series under Jim Harbaugh. You mentioned the two uh, gaff type wins or losses on the Michigan side. And uh, the one that comes to mind, of course, the you alluded to the, the punt snap was just unfathomable how that could happen because you not only had to drop the snap, but also fling it up in the air. If you fall on the ball, the game's over, but fling yep. the ball up in the air and Michigan state scores and goes on to a uh, college football playoff. Uh, Last week, Mark, Mark D'Antonio. I, I don't know. This is like devil and Daniel Webster. I made a deal with the pit of hell stuff. Last week against Penn state, they had four fumbles and didn't lose any of them. They had 16 passes defensed, and they went on the road and they won the game, Mark, against a team in the top 10. Who the hell does that? Who the hell goes on the road against a team in the top 10, has four fumbles, doesn't lose any of them, and has 16 passes defensed, including at the very end of the game where a guy had a pick six for Penn State and literally just dropped it. Could have ran, you know, to you know Harrisburg, uh, and he just dropped the ball. I I've never. So I'm just going to sit here, wait to see, you know, uh, what triple deflection interception Patterson throws, you know, bounces off a, a right tackle, maybe a cheerleader tips it in the air and 
you know, some walk on safety for Michigan State scoops it up, runs it in. So uh, we'll see. Yeah, there's a good uh, prop bet for Vegas right there. What is going to be the next way in which uh, Michigan loses to Michigan State? Because uh, yep. as you mentioned, Lewerke was not good in that game until the final drive. He threw 28 incompletions in the game, and they didn't run the ball. Right. And they still put up a bunch of points, and they pulled it out. Well, they put up enough points. They, they had 59 yards rushing on their first 24 rushes. And they had four fumbles and didn't lose one. And that happens to them all the time. There was a, a pro football focus had a crazy stat last year. Or not, no, it was not them. It was SB Nation. Had a crazy stat. Do you know which team was number one in the country in recovering its own fumbles last year? Can you guess? Uh, Michigan State. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. bright. Yeah, I pick up on these so things. They do this. I mean, they're tough enough to beat, man. But – it's it's just if you're gonna beat them, you don't really beat him either. Like I don't think Michigan, if they win the game, it's gonna be like twenty four to twenty. When you beat Michigan State, that's the thing too. If I was a Michigan State fan, I'd love about Mark D'Antonio. Like when we, if if you're a Michigan State fan, you're like, you know, here's what I know: if we're gonna lose, it's gonna be like the Ohio State game last year. We're just outclassed in the first half, and we know it, and we accept it. You know what? We tap the keg, turn the game off. See you next week, right? You like know you're not getting crushed like on the last play of the game. You know that. You know Kirk Cousins completes the Hail Mary at the end. You just know that, right? So if Michigan wins, it's going to be like 31-10. It's going to be like 24-7. to it's, it's, there, There's no way, there is no way, no way, that if it's like 24-20 and Michigan State has the ball at the end of the game, and I don't care if they're on the half-yard line and got to go 99 yards, there's no way Michigan is winning that game. If Michigan wins, it's because they walked in and they asserted themselves from the outset and they were the more talented team. And it looks like a somewhat less dominant version of last week's game because they were on the road. So, folks, forget my 27 to 17 Michigan pick. Uh, what you want to do because no, it could happen. No, it, that, that would be about the kind of win. Yeah, like double digit kind of a win. If okay, Michigan I, I'm on the fringe there. I, yeah. I guess I'm still good. Yeah. This all there's gives no way, you. There's what, no way Michigan's winning the game if it's within one possession. If what, Michigan's what, what at the end of the game, is the not here. What's what, that? What, what Steve is describing for everyone here is gives you cause to go follow him on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> at my Michigan psychosis. Podcast. Follow me at my psychosis this week <laughs> here. That's my Twitter account. Okay. Because That's if it is 24 to 20 with five minutes left, then he's going to be fit to be tied. Yeah, you can follow me then and at withdrawal. Yeah. Because then it becomes one and four against Michigan State and oh and four against Ohio State. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I gotta turn Sirius XM off for another week while Barrett Sully uh gets his uh weekly clicks at Jim Harbaugh's expense and becomes <laughs> unlistenable. That's what happens. So I don't think it's gonna really happen. Enjoying this. You'd never know we won that game last week by talking to me, would you? No, absolutely not. I expect. I want, I want, I want, and I want your viewers to know I was ecstatic Saturday, Sunday, Monday. But now that we are deeply in the throes of game week, now the bitterness is back. Uh, the bile has returned, and I just sort of feel like uh, you know it's my annual come get your whooping against Sparty. That's kind of how I feel until they change it. They got to change this, Mark, and I'm not alone. You know, and this is this is what a lot of the fans are feeling right now, which is we greatly appreciate. The progress that Jim has made in the program, it's of where it was when he took over. Uh, the incoming recruiting class that he's working on for 2019, it's conceivable we may end up with three five-star prospects. We haven't done that at Michigan in one class in 20 years, including that kid there from Columbus who some services think is the number one recruit in the class. There's a lot of confidence that we're going to nab him, uh, Zach Harris. So, I mean, the program's in great shape. But so the the the, the, the meta-narrative – the big picture, Michigan fans are ecstatic. But there's these two bucket list items in the in the details that we gotta we gotta get over these humps, you know, and uh and this is one of them. This rivalry game, and then the next one at the end of the season. Okay. And and so I'm I'm on edge right now. I'm on tilt. You wanna play you wanna play poker with me right now, okay, because you're gonna beat me. I'm on tilt right now. Yes. <laughs> Well, you did get over the hump in beating that three and nine Michigan State team. Technically, you're you're not 0 for. 
you don't want to be one in three. You, you should beat, if you're Michigan, you win seven the out worst of ten, talk. right? This is the worst pep talk ever. Thank you. It, it, it is pretty poor out of my part. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't disagree with that. You got to win seven out of ten at least against uh, Little Brother, right? See, I don't. I hate the little brother stuff. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I hate it. And it's and you know what, Mike Hart, what he the dude dropped a steaming pile on us with that, and we have been doggy bagging that for the last ten years. And as many yards as he ran for, he didn't beat Ohio State enough to leave us with an annual uh, talking point for Sparty. Uh, that that mess that Mike Hart has left us to clean up with this rivalry. Uh, is one of the biggest factors here. It And what it did is it didn't just change this rivalry. It, it gave Michigan State under Mark D'Antonio an identity. That moment gave him a hook. It gave him an identity. And it's been their galvanizing identity as a program, uh, really, ever since that time. And it's, and it's, it's paid dividends for them. And so what we need to do on Saturday uh, is we need to do what Ohio State did to them last year, we need to do what Alabama did to them in the playoff. You know, everybody's saying, hey, Michigan's back. All those recruiting classes, the player development, it's all there. It's all lined up. Well, what Michigan needs to do is they need to go. If they get in there in the first quarter and get the lead, they have the superior depth. You give our defense a chance to pin its ears back and go after Lewerke. It can look a lot like what happened last week. But, man, if we give them any confidence at all to start the game, Here we go again, White Snake. That's what happens. Okay. When I think Michigan, Michigan State, I hearken back to the days on AstroTurf on both fields and Sparty usually coming in at give them a tie. We'll throw them a midseason tie because that was football back then. And my son still sees these NFL games now and and says, Oh, yeah, they they tied. What what happens then? And I I bring up the classic example of the 19. 91 Michigan team that went uh, 9-0 and 3 the 92, 92 team yep yes 9-0 yep. and tied 3 Illinois, so they tied Illinois tied Ohio State and uh, tied Notre Dame at the start of the year yeah. yes and, and talk to him about high games, but uh, Michigan, Michigan State, usually, you know, about this time of year, Michigan State, if we're talking circa 1985, 90, you know, they come in there like three, two and one and Michigan's got one or zero losses and they're mm -hmm. ranked in the top five or 10 and Michigan State's nowhere to be found and it still turns out to be a really good game. Those are the ones I remember. Yeah, I, I, I remember carrying the ball 35 times. Yeah, I, I remember when we used to beat them all the time. But I'm getting older now, and so my memory is getting kind of foggy. That's what I remember. All right. Well, I, I think your team's going to help you out uh, with a new, fresh slate uh, starting on Saturday. But we I hope you're see. right, because we, we, we have a bye after that. And I don't I, – I can't even two weeks of suffering through um, – Paul Feinbaum and Clay Travis and Barrett Salee and the SEC media brigades, uh, frothing Cujo esque frothing at the mouth over the amount of clickbaits they're going to get at Jim Harbaugh and our expense with, if we lose on Saturday and then have a buy for two weeks of that will dreadful, dreadful. So we better win. Well, Steve is a guy who enjoys looking at the lines and trying to beat Vegas, as I know you do. I don't need to tell you. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I've got, you know, stacks of these kind of notebooks with, you know, all sorts of betting lines and my predictions and the whole deal. And anything in this college football season that runs between about a plus four and a plus eight or nine seems to be about a 50-50 game. There have been a ton of those kind of upsets. Thank you. <laughs> that just again this is the worst pep talk ever thank you <laughs> oh steve dace michigan podcast i miss him coming on <laughs> and this is coming off a 25 point win against the badgers this is unbelievable that was that was that was, that was four days ago now <laughs> it's now it's eight week yes you used to have like none of those a year though oh wait to 14. I know, and I, I I enjoyed it at the time, but now I'm just like, you know, now I'm like looking at, I'm just, I'm looking ahead to that proctology exam, and it's never fun, man. It's <laughs> never fun. 
Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Michigan State, they are just a, a program to marvel at. And uh, I do it from a different perspective. For you, it's 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 uh, exactly that, as you described. But for the rest of us, it's, you know, they love Midwestern football. Michigan State and Wisconsin, those are the programs to 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 look up to, to admire those the the make the the most out of little mm-hmm. and, and pull together, you know, the three stars to build a top 15 program. Yeah, I guess. Yes. All right, Steve, we appreciate you stopping by. It's always a fun yeah, time. Right. It's it's a little bit more um there's a little less emotion, a little more intellect in the off season when we can look through history. Yeah. We can um, look back yeah. to yesteryear and analyze the rankings. But man, it's it's pulling at you right now, boy. You're fighting it. We have to win this game on Saturday. I, I just I can't even if we don't, Mark. I can't even if we don't. We have to win this game on Saturday. Well, you're the better team. Our fan base is going to be very cranky. If they don't win on Saturday, very cranky. And I doubt if there will be much solace in knowing if you do lose that you would win four out of five. Yeah, I mean, if they lose and they went out, I still think they'll be in the Big Ten championship. No, game. I, I mean that if you lose to Michigan State, the reasonable fan, the reasonable analyst would say, well, Michigan would still win four out of five against Michigan State. That just happened to be the one that you played. Was yeah, I, I, I'd like, I, I kind of like to start winning the one we play. Yeah, I'd like to start winning that one. Yeah, they don't. They, they don't tell me. They, they, they tell me that's the most important one, and it's a lot of fun when you do it. Yeah. I don't. Know. I'm not experienced in a while, so I'd, I'd kind of like to see what it's like for myself, rather than finding out about it secondhand. Okay. Revenge number one came against Wisconsin. Now revenge right. number two, back to back here. I hope so for the maize and blue to set up a huge showdown potentially in Columbus. They could be massive circa 2016 massive. Yep. Yep. Let's hope that's how it goes down. I think that'd be great for this region, the conference and college football. And we don't even have to win Saturday for that to happen. You know, and I, I, I we had this three game stretch. We got to go two and one, you know, we got the first one out of the way. If we lose here and then beat Penn state in a couple of weeks, uh, this conversation will sound completely different and you'll be in a situation where that game in Columbus will be for all the marbles in the big 10, which with our schedule heading into the year, that was my number one goal is that we would go into the game in Columbus and have the East division title on the line in that game. Cause I actually feel like we match up a lot better with Ohio state. Uh, and I think you've seen that play out the last couple of years uh, uh, with Ohio state and more of a spread team. And we have more of a power pro set and I let, that's kind of reminds me of Jim's uh, matchups with Chip Kelly in Oregon when he was in the Pac-12 at Stanford. And I think we have the quarterback this year that we didn't have the last couple of years. But what Michigan State does is they just – they hit you with an ugly stick and they just beat you with it for 60 minutes. And if you do anything at all to beat yourself, like Trace McSorley run out of bounds that run out of the clock. Mm-hmm. You drop a pick six at the end of the game that would have won the game. The minute you do anything to beat yourself at all, they Andre Agassi you every single time, like he used to do in his prime, all right? So that's what I'm worried about. We seemingly cannot avoid doing things to beat ourselves wearing white jerseys. And until I see us not do that, I'm, I I don't know what else to pick. You know, I'm picking with my heart, not with my head until I see it. I had Claire Crawford on uh, last hour talking Ohio State, and I had to let her know, Claire, you know that there's a team north of the border that even though from a glossy, glitzy standpoint, your team looks better right now because people look at passing numbers and Dwayne Haskins is tearing up secondaries. They're playing considerably better where it counts. Yep. yep. So I, I just, I don't want to suffer through two weeks of any more Sparty losses, Mark. So we got to. One last thing, Steve, the scenario that you just brought up in winning two of the three to set up the championship match for the East Division in Columbus, though, as you well know, in this college football playoff paranoia mindset, this is all we think about. As soon as you said a second loss, 92% of the people watching are thinking they're they're done. Forget them because they're not thinking what we're thinking. And that's 
win the Big Ten championship. Beat yeah, they're 100 percent wrong. I mean, everybody forgets we went into the last weekend last year with Auburn with two losses at number two. And if they had won the SEC net championship over Georgia, they'd have been in the playoff with two losses. Okay, so I don't think the two loss thing matters at all. I don't think um I, I think Ohio State was penalized for having two losses because Alabama only had one. I don't I don't even think that was SEC bias. I told you at the time. I thought it was Alabama has earned an amount of street cred. I think if we had the exact same two teams and the other team wasn't called Alabama, it was called, say, Mississippi State, Arkansas, um, you know, uh, Florida, even. I, I don't think they would have gotten in over Ohio State. Similar to if Ohio State in 2014 went head to head with Oklahoma and Texas sharing the Big 12 championship instead of Baylor and TCU. I don't think they would have gotten in over one of them. I think brands do matter, okay? And so I, I don't think two losses automatically disqualifies you. We're already heading into a situation where it looks darn near impossible for there to be two teams out of the SEC now. Uh, I don't, you know, the, the Big 12 doesn't really have, uh, I don't know what, what, what if, it's, if Oklahoma wins out, what's their signature non, what, as a league, they don't really have a lot of good non-conference wins. The Pac-12 is essentially out. I think Oregon will lose on Saturday at Washington State. So, and, and I say this too about the playoff thing, because I got Michigan fans asking me about this. We haven't won a damn division championship yet. We haven't won the conference title in 15 years. How about we do one of those things and then worry about it, okay? Not to mention we have a, a mostly new college football playoff committee this year. So we have no idea what things they're going to value compared to the last few years until we see the first ranking. So as Aaron Rodgers once said, relax. Yes, he does. And then he usually mentions his favorite beverage. Uh, he's, he's, he's a big martini. I don't know if it's a martini. Uh, what, I don't know. My what, dog's going to start barking here in a minute, though. My wife just got home with the kids from church, so I want to warn you. All right. He's gonna well, we're good. I, I'm out of questions. I can listen to you. Um, <laughs> Go on about college Kvetch. football in Michigan, in particular, especially this subject. You yes. for the good old days and, and wanting to see a signature win against a rival. All right, Steve, we appreciate you stopping I mean, by. An, any win, man. I don't care if it's three to damn two. Any win. Any win. Three any to win. two. Yeah, I'll take it. Take it. All right, Steve. We Thank appreciate you, Mark. it. Steve Day's Michigan it. Podcast. You got to check him out right there, YouTube and all the audio platforms uh, that you can imagine.